Hello everyone, welcome. This is the first lecture in your course Linux for Absolute Beginners by Idionics. My name is Ahmed and in this lecture we are going to have a brief introduction to operating systems. Now the first question that might pop up in your mind is what an operating system is. We all use operating systems, we all interact with them, but can you place a clear definition for an operating system? Well, to answer this question, you have to distinguish first between software and hardware. The hardware is anything physical in your computer. Anything that you can touch is considered hardware. Anything that is physically present in your PC or laptop is a hardware. Your keyboard, your mouse, if you're using one, the trackpad. Also anything under the hood, anything that works inside the computer or the laptop, like the hard disk, the motherboard, the CPU. These are all considered hardware. The software, on the other hand, is the opposite of that. It is anything that cannot be touched, like, for example, your internet browser, your word processor, the calculator that you use, any program that you use on your computer or laptop is considered a software. The operating system belongs to the second category. It is a software that is responsible for allowing the user to use the hardware. It acts like the interface between the user and the hardware. Now, in order, for example, to launch the word processing program, Microsoft Word for example if you're working on Windows and you want to have a new document and start writing a business letter for example, this might be a simple process to you but behind the scenes it's much more complex than just double clicking on the button or the icon and have the program available for you. It involves the operating system locating the file that you are pointing at with your mouse, then when you double click it, it will launch the code inside this file, it will allocate some space in memory for the code or the process to uh, start execution. And this process also involves interacting with the hard disk, interacting with the monitor, gaining input from the keyboard. When you start to edit the document that is coming through the keyboard, all this is done through the operating system behind the scenes. And the most famous examples of OSs, we have Microsoft Windows, Apple OS X, Solaris, and Ubuntu. These are all very well known kinds of operating systems. And in order for the OS to do its task, in order for the OS to do its job, it uses something called the kernel. The kernel linguistically, if you look it up a dictionary, it is defined as a softer, usually edible part of a nut, seed, or fruit stone contained within its shell. Actually, this offers a perfect analogy to the software kernel. Although it is a piece of software, you cannot, as a user, and you are not allowed to, to work with the kernel. You are not allowed to interface with the kernel. The only piece of software that can talk to the kernel is the operating system itself and the programs that are installed on the operating system. So for example, when you open up your web browser like Firefox, for example, and start browsing to google.com, this behind the scenes again involves, for example, talking to the, your network card in order to achieve network connection with your ISP and then to the internet. It also involves talking to your monitor in order to display the web page. It involves gaining input from your keyboard to have the URL you want and the address bar and so on. The program that organizes all this together is the kernel. So the kernel is responsible for availing the program's needs like memory, CPU and network. But it also provides a medium through which multiple programs can communicate with each other. And this is not uncommon in operating systems that programs behind the scenes without you noticing communicate with each other, they exchange data, and this is another job for the kernel. So each and every operating system on the market has its own type of kernel that cannot be used by other OSs. So for example, the kernel of Windows cannot be used by a Linux-based operating system or a Unix-based operating system or an Apple Mac operating system, for example. Each and every operating system has its own very specific kernel. And that brings us to a very important question. Is Linux an OS? Well, technically speaking, no. The word Linux refers to the kernel that has been developed by a student back in 1991. He was called Linus Torvalds and he was aiming at creating or developing a kernel that is similar to the much expensive at that time, until now actually, the Unix kernel. So back then, students, for, students in the computer science department of universities had to have access to a computer or a mainframe in order to do their assignments for example, and at that time it was Unix, and Unix was very expensive to work at, it was very expensive to gain access to, so this talented guy decided that it would be a good idea to create or develop a kernel that does the same tasks as the Unix kernel, and at the same time to be completely free 
So Linux there was born and it was of course named after the name of Linus Torvalds. And since 1991 till now Linux has evolved exponentially. Linux now is running on a wide variety of devices and it is running a number of OS's ranging from cell phones, which is the Android Linux based OS, up till the powerful supercomputers which are also running on Linux kernels. In this course, however, we are interested in only one type of OS running Linux kernels, which is the desktop type of operating systems, the operating system that is used to power desktops and laptops. And having identified Linux as a kernel and not an OS, it is not uncommon and it is not wrong to use Linux as a shortcut for a Linux-based operating system. So for example, you may hear somebody saying, hey, I'm using Linux at work. He may be referring to Ubuntu, CentOS, or Fedora, and that is still perfectly correct. Now let's have a look at your first encounter with Linux. Here we are assuming that you already have Linux installed on a machine and you are using it or trying to use it. If you haven't installed Linux before, we have a complete section dedicated just for this purpose. We're going to install Linux together. We have Ubuntu as an example system. But let's say that you do have Linux installed in some machine and you are trying to use it. One of the first things that is going to strike you is the interface. This is an Ubuntu variant of Linux. It is latest version at the time of this recording. It's 16.04 long time support. And this is the interface of Linux. It may be a little bit similar to the newest like Windows 10 version which does have a login screen like this with the username and password. I will type in my password and login. Okay and this is the Linux desktop. As you can see here it has some icons on the left and these are used to launch programs. This is the desktop, it has no icons on it. And notice that one of the great differences between Linux and Windows in that aspect specifically is that Linux does not have one interface. It has multiple interfaces to which you can work on. So for example, if I press Alt, Control and F1, notice what happens. I'm presented with a completely different login screen. It is a text-based login screen. If I type in my username and password like this, I will log in. And here I am inside the system. Okay, this may be a little like the MS DOS, which is an ancient operating system created by Microsoft back several years ago. And it looked somewhat like this, but of course it's totally, totally different than Linux. It has a totally different set of commands, and the command line in Linux is one of the strongest points. It's one of the best reasons why users switch on to Linux. It is its command line. It's very, very powerful. Okay, so this is the command line interface of Linux. If I press Alt Control F2, I will have another command line interface. As you can see here, if you notice, I just can't get the mouse here. We'll try to exit. The mouse is black, so I can show you. I just want to have a look at the first line in this interface and look at the last word. It is TTY2. This is just referring to the number of the interface. The first one, as you can see here, it was one, this is two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh one is the graphical user interface. So this is one of the differences between Linux and Windows in particular, is that it's got a number of different interfaces by which you can access the system, and not only does it have a number of interfaces, one of them is graphical and the other six are text-based, but even the GUI, even the graphical user interface, has a number of flavors on its own. So as we're going to discuss in a moment, you have something called Genome, something called KDE, something called Plasma, something called Unity, and all of them produce different interfaces and graphics through which you can use the system. So this may be one of the things that is, are going to strike you when you start working with Linux if you are coming from a Windows or a Mac environment. Now in the next lecture, we're going to see why and why not choose Linux, so stay tuned.